Shabbat Shalom. Or, my bad. Shalom, Shalom. I hope all is well. Should I go back and redo that? And not let you hear how I made the mistake of saying Shabbat Shalom when Shabbat has passed? If I did that, I would be... Uh, that would uncover my heart to you. That my concern is how you feel about me. What you think of me. My concern uh, would be looking smart and professional to y'all. That was an honest mistake. Kind of goes along with what I'm going to try to relay here right now. The dead horse is the lack of understanding. And yes, uh, that old saying lets us, know, lets us know it's not wise to beat that dead horse. I mean, it's, it's retarded. He's dead, right? So maybe I won't call it a dead horse anymore. I'll call it the dying horse. And I'm just not ready to give up yet. If I didn't love you, I would have left a long time ago. Ah. Uh, yeah, it could be that I just want you to get better so I can ride you and, and get what life you have left in you. Uh, you know, use it to my advantage. I don't think you're going to let me ride you, are you? Nah. And you know I'm not that retarded to think that you're going to. Put two and two together. Understand. The only explanation is love. If you look to prove, to find the truth in what I just said, you yourself will be displaying love and your genuine CS desire to find truth. Your humility. If you just want to be right and you just you're itching to prove me wrong, it doesn't matter what the answer is. Because the answer for you concerning your walk, salvation, uh, what that act will say about you is that you were just hoping to prove me wrong and you wanted to be right. Uh, I think I've said it before, but people would probably, if they didn't know my stance and my views but they seen how I uh, how diligent I am in my search for truth how reluctant I am to vouch for something they what they'd call me a skeptic but I, I'm no skeptic because a skeptic in their laziness they are seeing everything. Uh, they they're only looking for just enough evidence to disprove. And any uh, evidence they find that will prove and and that will show them that I'm right or whoever is right. They don't, they dismiss all that because that they're not looking for that. They're a skeptic. They're looking for what they need to prove you wrong. They're not objective. They're not looking for truth, regardless of uh, whether it proves them wrong or right. 
me wrong or right. I'm a truth seeker through and through. If you've been around long enough, you should know that. Or you should have a good idea of, about that. That's understanding. If you come and your objective in your search for truth and you have no problem with being wrong and you don't even consider uh, the fact the the possibility of you being wrong about something it doesn't matter to you that's of no concern to you all you want to know is what the truth is and if you're right you're right you're wrong you're wrong The fact that the land is not where they've told us it was, is, and it's actually somewhere else, that fact doesn't have anything to do with your salvation. So a lot of people, I'm sure, they see the subject matter and they think, well, well, you know, how important, that's not important, I'm not... It's not over there, this guy's crazy, so I'm not even looking into that. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, it could be in South Africa. And that would still have no, uh, it would have no effect on your salvation. What does, however, is whether or not you have a stiff neck or not because if you have a stiff neck we'll only know we'll only know that you have a stiff neck by your straight up dismissal your rebuke of truth I mean if if lies come to you and your stiff neck causes you to see bullshit you know, to uh, call bullshit instantly. Yeah, well, that's a good kind of stiff neck, right? But if it's actual truth and you refuse it because because you ain't got time or you don't feel the you know, see the importance of it, it has nothing to do with salvation. All that matters. is how you understand things. When, if you're someone that I've tried to uh, cause you to see the truth about the, the inherited land and you've from the get-go rebuked it and just you're not you don't care you know I'm wrong right if that's you what if we wrote down what happened and and we wrote down your response your reaction to that information that was brought to you is it going to factually prove that you blasphemed the Ruach HaKadosh, the set-apart spirit, the spirit of truth. Is that what it's going to say? And if you have understanding, you'll have no problem with that. If you have understanding, you won't need to go that far because you'll understand what I just said. How many times have we read Proverbs chapter 1 that tells us about understanding? How many times have you read
right here in Luke, where well, I thought I moved it on on accident. No, I meant to do that. This is just more of my perfection, guys. No, I moved it with my finger. Where was it? Oh, right here. Woe to you, because you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. So you bear witness that you approve of the works of your fathers. He, he, he didn't say, so you, your words bear witness. No, he said, you bear witness that you approve of the works of your fathers, while they're saying they didn't. See, understanding, if you have understanding, you'll understand that words have nothing to do with facts, necessarily. If I'm robbing a bank, but I'm telling you, I don't rob banks. I'm not a bank robber. Yes, you are. You're robbing a bank. And it doesn't matter how much I kick and scream and cry. And I could firmly believe in my delusional head that I'm not a bank robber. I could do that. It doesn't matter. If you rob banks, well, by golly. Uh, if you just robbed your first bank, well, you're you're officially a bank robber now. And if you tell me you're not, well, you're just delusional because you robbed a bank. If you uh, <laughs> understanding is easy, it takes humility. If you can't understand things, it's because pride has prohibited you from doing so. And because of this, the wisdom of Elohim said, of the Most High said, I shall send them prophets and emissaries, and some of them they shall kill and persecute, so that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, shall be required of this generation. From the blood of Habal, to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the slaughter place and the dwelling place. See how he always makes sure he brings up the uh, locale, right? Location, location, location. Yes, I say to you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe to you learned in the Torah, because you took away the key of knowledge. You did not enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in you hindered. And as he was saying this to them, the scribes, well, we know what they want to do. But they hindered him, right? Look, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, pointing out anything that I haven't done myself, you know. I've, uh, I've had people in the past say things to me that I had never really heard before maybe or that I didn't believe and I just straight up called bullshit and and refused to go see if it was actually bullshit or not I just thought I knew that it was and um and I hindered you know I I, I may have hindered someone who was uh had the dream of being a prophet of prophesying uh, for the Most High, of repeating the words of the Most High, of esteeming the Most High. If someone is trying, uh, he's Given glory and esteem to the Most High, Abba Yahuwah. Uh, whether you think he's wrong or not, we should never try to prohibit a man from doing that. Why would we? 
we're not prohibiting someone uh, that's murdering babies somewhere or uh, sacrificing to bail but we're throwing a fit uh, and trying to discourage a man that's trying to work for the Most High and he probably is employed by the Most High it doesn't matter if you uh, think he is or not woe to you is where the land is uh, detrimental to your salvation no is the fact that you would not even look at it because of any reason you have to offer Maybe it's because you think you know. And maybe it's because you think there's no way. Whatever reason you have. Your response to it. If you've said you love someone who said something that you didn't agree with and refused to even consider. And you think it's wrong and it's leading astray by saying what that person says that has a lot to do with your salvation because if you don't love your neighbor well hey bye bye chapter 1 verse 1 verse 2 for knowing wisdom and discipline for understanding the words of understanding for receiving the discipline of wisdom righteousness right ruling and straightness for for giving insight to the simple knowledge and discretion to the young the wise one hears and increases learning and the understanding one gets wise counsel for understanding a proverb and a figure the words of the wise and their riddles the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge. And fools despise wisdom and discipline. You know why the fear of the Most High is, is the beginning of wisdom? And you can't obtain any wisdom without it. When a prophet, when a person claiming or, or behaving like a prophet comes to you and you think, yeah, right, like I have many times, uh, there ain't no way he's a prophet. And you say, please, to anything he said. You had no fear of the Most High. If you had fear, it would be innocent till proven guilty on all matters regarding the Most High. Just in case, because you fear Him, you ain't taking no chances. Your life uh, isn't a gamble to you. You're not gambling with your eternal life. And if you do like that and you have the I mean you you firmly do think that I don't care if it is coming, if it is right, if what they're saying is true. I don't need to hear it. Maybe that's how you look at it. Do you really believe? Because if you truly believe that he is real, 
you truly will fear him and you'll take no chances. And what's just a few minutes of finding the truth in what anyone says? And if you're afraid that it might prove something that you've claimed wrong, then who are you afraid of? Man or the Most High? Where's your humility and your understanding? You have to have understanding or bye-bye. You have to have fear of the Most High. Abba, Yahuwah is his name. He is our wonderful creator. And he always gets all honor, praise, glory, and esteem. And all matters that have his name on it, it requires your due diligence. If it's a miss, uh, if someone's misrepresenting our Abba, your Abba, then that requires your diligence to set that matter straight. If it's truth and it's life-saving, it's pertinent to your salvation, and you are clueless to it, then it requires your attention. Better understand, Mish. And the time is short. You definitely don't want to be gambling right now. Playtime's over, Mish. I love you. Peace out for now. I'm out, baby.